hello guys welcome back to my channel thank you for always stopping by liking commenting and subscribing for the new ones don't forget to like comment subscribe turn on notification bell so that you'll be notified and when i drop the next episode on i do kobo hi feel free to tell us what you want on the comment section zoya who determines herself that she would keep her ego aside decides to talk to asad and go outside she mustered up courage tries but is unable when faced with him to talk remembering last night's argument she's about to talk when asad leaves calling out to do chad that he's going for a very important meeting ayan is looking at the ring and thinking that such a beautiful ring could make any girl's heart melt while humara is watching him talk to himself from a distance he leaves the room giving her the chance to try on the ring when Ayan returns and finds the ring in her hand, he tries to take it out, but it gets stuck. They both try to pull it out. Razia and Shirin passing by look at them and assume that they are a too much in love couple and that they are already practicing their own engagement ceremony. They happily leave. Humaira too leaves Ayan's room while he puts the ring back in its case. Zoya gets into Asad's room to search for her earring, which she's sure is lying in there. But then she hears Asad's voice and realizing that he's back in the house, she hides next to the sofa post. Asad enters and starts changing much to Zoya's horror. When he's about to take off his pants, Zoya stops him saying that he should be taking off all the clothes and then before he can say anything, she runs out of his room. He follows her and is about to scold her when he remembers his vow not to speak to her. Zoya takes advantage of this and instigates him to talk. He tries asking her what she was doing in his room, but she deliberately pretends not to understand it and also mocks him for it. She says that she can't be angry at somebody for long and therefore she has decided to forgive him. She tells him that she went in there for, his, for her earring and leaves with Assad frustratedly looking around. Assad gets Ayan's call and he tells Assad that Nikat's engagement is tomorrow and he is a little sad. Assad tells him that sisters have to go but they always reside in our hearts. They are about to talk more but hearing the child's voice, he tries to cut it short, but Ayan wants to speak with him more. He makes him understand that he shouldn't be this reckless about talking with him till her marriage is done. He cancels the call. Asad wonders to himself that it's very painful for him too, that he can't talk freely with his little brother, whom he taught how to walk. Even Ducha doesn't know that he secretly meets Ayan. He wonders that he himself tells her not to keep relation with that house all the while doing that himself. Hearing her voice call him out again, he opens the door. She gives him his coffee and leaves. Zoya behind the door thinks to, him, to herself that tonight she would search Assad's room and find her earring. Duchard working on the sewing machine remembers that the doctor had told Rashid to get a checkup. She calls him up. He happily picks up. She asks him if he feels better now. Before he can answer, she hears Shirin's voice asking Rashid why he is taking medicine. In his efforts to explain to Shirin, he also finds a way to passively talk to Dilchard and tell her that he's better and the reports came back fine. Shirin goes to get his sweater. Duchard, having heard, cancels the call. Zoya enters into Assad's room. Her torchlight distracts Assad from his sleep and he wakes up to find a sihote in the dark. Assuming it to be Ayan, he asks him to leave and then goes to give him a cuddle so that he can leave as without that Assad knows Ayan wouldn't. But on hugging, he is surprised, and he switches on the light to find Zoya. She immediately says that she always had a doubt that he met somebody at night, and now that she knows the truth, 
she would tell everybody. Asad instantly breaks his vow of not speaking with her and tries to talk. But she refuses saying that when she wanted to talk, he showed her attitude. Now, she would spread his secrets like wildfire and leaves. Asad is worried that what would happen if Dilchard gets to know. While Hasina's relative is happy about the gift, Hasina pretends to be very indifferent and highly critical of the gift Ayan has brought for them. He, however, shot her saying that they don't bother about the price of the gift, rather the intention of the person giving it. Saying so, he leaves cordially. Hasina then calls up Ferus, saying that Ayan has left her house. Ferus says that today he will take care of the work she gave him. He sees Ayan driving past him. He tells his unit on the walkie-talkie that Ayan is headed their way and asks them to be alert. Asad scolds Najma for the utensils not being dried properly. She does so and is about to leave for college when Zoya comes in. And while talking to her, Zoya tries to hint her that she has a secret to tell Dilchard just for irritating Asad. Najma finally leaves for college while Zoya continually irritates Asad while she begins to call Dilchard. When Asad tries to threaten, she all the more fastens her process to call. When she calls up, he cancels, which prompts her to say that she wouldn't tell Dilchard on one condition. When he doesn't agree, she again calls, which prompts Asad to say yes. She finally cancels, saying, she, she sits on Asad's spot, which he doesn't allow anyone else to sit, and tells him to get co coffee for her leaving him as standard. Sensing no way out, he frustratedly gets her coffee. She takes it with her own poetry recitation. Just to irritate him, she asks him to clear the coffee cup as she doesn't like drinking in dirty cup. He does so as he doesn't have a choice. She then goes on to show the spot that he does to Najma. Then she asks him to throw two spoons of coffee on the table. When he doesn't comply, much to his displeasure, she goes on to take the spoon herself and drops to show him and then asks him to do it. Him in anger takes the whole cup and spills it on the table. Then himself, realizing what he has done, he goes on to frantically clean the table while Zoya is in a fit of laughter. Then she goes on to get a pizza and cook from Assad. While Assad pleads that she should not keep her part of the promise since he did what she wanted him to do. She pretends to hear him while deliberately placing beads on the sofa to irritate him. She says that she did it, but not with his heart, and he will have to do it till his heart is in it. When she threatens him, she again goes on to call Duchard from the landline since she can't find her mobile. Asad catches her off guard and grabs her by the hand and pulling her close to him says that if she tells anybody, then he will have to kill her. He also tells her that she would have her earring back. Saying so, he releases her and goes. Zoya, who is relieved of the pleasure of his hand on her neck, remembers how he had fought with so many men and that he is so keen on keeping his secrets. Her brilliant mind comes to the conclusion that he's a spy and therefore starts imagining him in a Bond 007-like position. Ayan, while riding, comes across boulders in his way. Puzzled as to who places them there, he goes on to pick them and lands into a trap and is thrown feet first into the air and is hanging by a rope upside down. While he's wondering what happened, Ferris arrives in his jeep with his men. Ferris and his men bring Ayan into a factory and begin to torture him on the pretext that he had beaten up Nadine and for that, he has been brought for interrogation. When he asks why here and not in the police station, 
Ferus beats him up all the more. He ties Ayan's hand and feet to the chair and asks him the same question about his relation with Asad Ahmad Khan. He refuses to answer and he scares Ayan by showing him a flame, flaming hot iron rod. He brings it right to his eyes but is distracted by a phone call. Finding himself alone, Ayan takes the opportunity to free himself from them. When Pharaoh's men returned, he catches them off guard and runs from there. Pharaoh and his men start talking to him about the fertility of his running since he has nowhere to escape to. Ayan in a safe place calls up Assad, who thinks that though he had instructed Ayan not to call, he still doesn't listen. Ayan calls again and this time Assad picks. But just then, Ferus too catches hold of Ayan and throws his phone on the ground. Assad hears through the entire conversation the call being on and Ayan too smartly informs Assad the location that he is being tortured in a deserted iron factory next to a biscuit factory outside the city. Assad is fuming with anger when he hears Ferus asking Ayan again and then also hears him beating him up. Assad arrives at the factory and finds Ayan hanging from the ceiling in a disheveled state and comes and frees him. While Ayan is relieved to find him there, they both are shocked to find being surrounded by Pharaoh's men. However, they are unfazed and start to, to together beat them up to pulp. But finally, Pharaoh's men get over them and when they begin to hit Assad, Ferris stopped them, saying that for Assad to be hurt, they need to hit Ayan. He does so all the while Assad is in a heart-wrenching pain every time Ayan gets a blow. He accuses Ferris of being so bold due to his uniform, thereby instigating him to take off the uniform. Unable to see Ferris beating up Ayan anymore, he gets over his men and after beating and scaring off everybody, he goes after Ferus, who tries to flee, sensing himself in danger. But Assad catches hold on him and takes his revenge for every blow that he rendered on Ayan. Finally, in a fit of ravaging anger, he screams out that Ayan is his younger brother, all the while beating him to unconsciousness. Finally, Ayan intervenes to stop Assad from hitting anyone. Assad hugs Ayan tight. Hasina is watching this from a distance with a victorious smile, thinking to herself that finally their secret is out in the open. Okay guys, thank you for watching today's episode on I Do. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and stay tuned for more updates. Bye.